Oh, that's what Winchester Cathedral looks like at 7.30 in the morning at the start of the St. Swithin's Way on the 17th of December, close up to the longest day, no, shortest day of the year. I've got 34 miles to do in two days, wild camping, and sunsets at four o'clock. And I'm going that way, which I've just come from, from the train station. There we go, the first sign I've seen. I'm about a mile in, it's the first sign I've seen. Down there is a heron, taking advantage of the early morning quad. Beside the fact that I've walked out of Winchester and walked many a time, the St. Swithin's Way does seem to take a, a different route out, which is nice. As I say, that was the first sign I've seen. But be expected in city centres. It's getting light really quickly. There's still no people about, which is nice. Good old itching. I walked the itching way last March. I think it was. If you want to see somebody being an idiot walking a path, I'd highly recommend it. Flip flops necessary. Yeah. yeah, just passed underneath the M3, hence the noise you can hear. But it's quite. A little bit sad really, because I've walked this on the Itching Way, Allen King Way, Watercrest Way, and now I'm walking the St Swindon's Way. Unfortunately somebody thinks that the Watercrest Way signs are too pretty, and has nicked quite a few of them. And there's no more waymarked paths that actually follow this route. So uh, I probably won't be back here for a while because there's loads of other paths in the area. Just coming up towards Itchin Abbas now I suddenly realised that the sound of the roads has gone. About four and a half miles from Winchester when the background hum of the roads which at times gets a little bit louder disappears. And all you're left with is the sound of the river itching and the birds. Just before Abbas, itching Abbas, came across this lovely spot. There's a, a bench down there. There's a swing there. And if you need it, and you don't like filtering water, there's even a tap. And I've tested it and it's working. I have walked along here a few times, as I've already said, and I never knew that tap was there. And they don't look new. That's what you get for walking the other way. Because walking this way, you see it walking the other way. Never seen it. About six miles in now. I think it's getting colder again. I've uh, just taken a short break at the Abington Park Golf Club. Uh, we're hoping for a bacon butty, but they don't do cooked. But they do do coffee and I haven't had a chunky Kit Kat in a while. I have to say, the peace and quiet is lovely. Uh, does my head the world of good. I think this is one of the reasons why my wife doesn't mind me going walking when I've been haven't gone for a walk for a while. She uh, she knows it does me good. From 
Ovington through to Bishop Sutton. You are doing a bit of road walking. It's not wide enough for two cars, so everyone's driving quite slowly and it's not very busy at all. Uh, and I've got bright orange rucksack, so I'm very visible. So it's not unpleasant, but it is about four miles of road walking to do at this point. But there's rivers on both sides and uh, it's quite fun watching the trout darting about. These are the watercress beds just outside New Aylesford. The water here is super clear. I probably didn't need to filter it, to be honest. I don't know how long these beds have been here for, but a very long time, it's my guess. Still on the road, going into Bishop Sutton now. Um, this one's a little bit less pleasant. It's a bit wider, cars go a bit faster, and. Yeah. So, after Bishop Sutton, the long stretch of road walking is over. Looking at the map, there's a couple of sections later on today, but nothing like I've just done. I'm quite pleased about it, really. If nothing else, it's quite difficult to go for a wee when you're on that type of road. You never know what's coming, and when you're wearing a bright orange rucksack, it's a bit difficult to uh, blind in. But yeah. Lovely and peaceful now. We've got these lovely signs at the moment. Somebody's put up in red, just to really make sure we don't go anywhere else. Oh. As if the dogs ain't enough. But yeah, first styles I've come across today. Oh. Right, it's a little after 17 miles, it's a little after 2.30, I'm at the place where I want to camp, problem is I have no water and it's still a little bit early, so I don't know quite what to do at the moment, I was hoping that some of these fields would have cattle troughs in them. But they look to be mostly crops. So I'm hoping that if I walk on a bit, I'll find a cattle trough or something that I can filter water from. Hmm. But it's, uh, you can tell that it's already beginning to drop the light. Oh well. Right, well, this is me all set up for the night. That picture makes it look a lot lighter and it actually is. The light is failing, fading quite fast. Just after I recorded the bit about really desperately needing water, I found water within a hundred yards. There was a cattle trough. And although it may not look much in that picture I've just put on the screen, it was actually really clean water. This is where I am tonight. It's four o'clock and we're losing the light fast. It's been a good day. Apart from that bit up to Bishop Sutton, I could have lived without that. But the rest of it was really good. No, quite happy. Fair bit of road walking, but not busy roads. Um, and at this time of year, that's really a good thing because some of the fields were a bit churned up. But uh, I would say I'm looking forward to a good night's sleep, but the sun doesn't rise till half seven-ish. So I've got 15 and a half hours in the tent. Well, it's just before seven and it's 
that dark out there. So yeah, uh, just getting myself together. Just about to have some scrambled egg and cheese, and a cup of coffee, like old civilized people. Had a great night's sleep. Really looking forward to today. Cold last night, as you can tell from the steam. So yeah, just to get breakfast packed away. Uh, and then get out and back on the road. Well, as you can see, practicing leave no trace. It's just before eight, and I'm on my way. So, all is good. Got 15 miles to do today to Fareham. Hoping to catch the 3.30 train. Um, yeah. I've said it before, but one of the best things about wild camping is being back on the trail very early in the morning, before anyone else. And it's really peaceful. Just walking away from the Woodside Farms now, off towards Alton. If I get my timing right, I might be able to stop for a cup of coffee, maybe a bacon butty. But I'm walking down this lane at the moment, which is very pleasant. My only concern is it's so early that perhaps if there is a car driver they wouldn't be expecting to see a walker. Oh, I'm just about to turn off and we're going down this way. So that fear has just gone. Oh, what's past that? Writer's Way. Mm, never heard of Writer's Way. That's where I've just come from. <coughs> and that's where I'm going. That was a bit of a stint without any videoing. I've just come through Alton and then a group of schools that were had school children playing, so it wasn't really an opportunity to video. This is really the first time I've been out in open countryside since first thing this morning. It's all been towns and buildings. As I say, Alton was nice. Uh, there's quite a lot of interesting architecture. Uh, at nine o'clock in the morning it was fine. Don't know how I'd feel about it later on in the day if it gets busy or whatever. But uh, yeah. I was planning to have a coffee, but I had scrambled egg and cheese from a summit to eat this morning, and it's really filled me up. But this is foil, and foil is very pretty. You just get some lovely old type of building and bits like this where you just think the age of these things is incredible. It's a lovely bench if you don't mind getting your bum wet. I presume that when St Swithin's did this walk he went via big houses and stuff to uh, and churches in order to replenish his time. Because you don't half get to see from the lovely big houses on this walk. That's Colbury House. But yeah, you go past quite a few churches as well, which is nice. Because in about an hour's time, I'm going to stop for some lunch. And I know that there will be a church sometime soon after that. Yeah. Just coming up the driveway to Pax Hill now. Integrated with this lovely display with a uh, Sanders obviously on a push bike this year and being ecologically sound. Yeah, see quite a few little displays as you go along, it's good fun. Some of them I think would look really good at night, but that one I don't think had any lights on it, it's designed to be viewed during the day. That's nice. Whilst having lunch in the porch of Bentley Church, which by the way gets very good reviews because it has a water tap 
and a dustbin, I've realised that I don't actually go through any towns until I get to Farnham now. Basically after Alton you are walking farmers fields, country lanes, small villages and it's really nice, it's really lovely. This is parts of the world you wouldn't normally see because uh, they're not really on the route to anywhere. This is Wallfield Copse. I'm walking through at the moment. Very nice. Part of it's obviously for pheasant rearing. Yeah. So still and quiet. This is probably one of the furthest views that I've had. It is quite flat on the St Swithin's Way. But this is quite a nice view, it has to be said. There you go, I've got about four miles to go. Unless... You come around that side. I don't know why coming around that side adds two and three quarter miles to your journey. And I don't know what the 53 kilometres is. Uh, I was going past Lower Park Farm. There's a small section of road there which is far busier than it's got any right to be. The, um, but apart from that section and the bit of Bishop Sutton, which is a couple of miles, I've really enjoyed all of this walk. It's really been good. Right, I'm about a mile out of Farnham now. The St Swithin's Way handily ends at the train station. It's unusual, but it helps. I can't imagine St Swithin actually walk to the train station. So, yeah, I'd recommend the St Swithin's Way. It's, uh, it's not overly challenging. But to be honest, for me, it's been exactly what I needed. A good leg stretch testing out some gear, uh, all of which has performed really well. To be honest, I'd be disappointed if it didn't, considering the amount of research and money that's gone into it. Right, I'm just going to crack on with the last bit now. See you soon. Right, I've got less than a mile to go and that's my first view of Farnham. It brings you in in a nice route that seems to avoid most of the town. I hope you've enjoyed the video, if you have please like, if you want to see more please subscribe. Next one will probably be the three castles. I'm sort of building up to doing some more of the national trails from April onwards. So yeah, I've got some steps here, GoProing and steps don't next. So, please like, please subscribe and um, if you've got any comments leave them below. As with all these things, side is deteriorated as we got into town. But I have made it to the end of the St Swithin's Way. Until next time, stay safe.